Welcome, I'm Edward, the Training and Technical Sales Manager here at RPB Safety. In this quick video, we're going to show you how to set up your T200 Tychem respirator. First, you'll unpackage the contents of the box. You'll notice you'll have your Tyvek hood, an air vent, and also the head suspension. First, we'll show you how to assemble the head suspension system. What you'll notice on the side of the head suspension is there's these green clips and there's a small arrow on that clip that matches up with the arrow that is on the air vent. This indicates the orientation that that air vent needs to assemble onto that head suspension bracket. So you simply line up those arrows clip that into position on the one side, turn that around, and clip it into position on the other side. That's your air vent now secured onto the head suspension. Now there are several ways that you can adjust this head suspension to fit perfectly onto your head. Firstly, you can adjust the position of your head within the respirator by adjusting the clips on the side. You simply lift up on the lever at the back and then slide it forward or back to the desired location to give yourself either more or less space at the front of that hood. You can also adjust the brow pad by unlatching it at the front and then coming to the inside where you can then press that in, that will release the locking me mechanism on the inside. You can then locate that again, make sure that it's located into position, and then allow the front portion of that to clip into position on the outside. And you can repeat that on both sides, making sure they're both in exactly the same position. You also have the ability to adjust the direction of airflow within that T200. Just by adjusting the vent will channel the air either over the visor or more over your face, whichever you're most comfortable with. There is also the straps across the top of your head that you can adjust to give the head suspension more depth or if your head is a little smaller, to position the head suspension higher on your head whilst you're wearing it. Finally, you have the ratchet adjustment at the back to tighten that head suspension onto your head. Don't be afraid to try the head suspension on before you put the Tychem hood on. That way you know that that head suspension's fitting perfectly. Now we'll show you how to attach the Tychem hood. But before we do that, I briefly want to explain how this system attaches to these clips on the side. To illustrate this, we'll go to a closer shot so that we can show you how this works. I'm also going to be turning this Tychem hood inside out, revealing the locking mechanism that's located on the side of the lens. You'll see that there's a square edge and also a rounded edge. When you're coming to attach it onto the T200 head suspension, you'll notice there's a rounded edge on the clip as well as a flat edge. What you'll notice is that the rounded edge on that clipping mechanism will slip underneath the clip that is attached to the head suspension. Once that's secured underneath there, you'll then be able to slightly lift up the back portion of that to allow that to clip into position at the back. That is how you attach the T200 hood to the head suspension. To release that, 
all you're doing is lifting up on that back tab until it pops out of place and comes apart. Now to show you how to assemble the T200 together with the Tykem hood onto the head suspension. So first you want to get the Tykem hood and you'll notice that there's a black gasket with a hole in the back of the hood. This is where the air vent breathing tube attachment will pass through. You'll also notice on the air vent attachment that there's a rib. That rubber gasket needs to pass right over that rib to ensure there's a good seal on that respirator. So now we will take that Tykem hood, place it over the head suspension, and allow that inlet to pass through the rubber gasket, ensuring that that rib comes all the way through. Now that's through, we can then attach the visor to the head suspension as we discussed earlier in the video. Now those are in position, you can then attach the small black clips that are on the drawstring that go around your face to the head suspension. This ensures that there's a good tight seal around your face while you're wearing it. These attach onto the furthest out point on the head suspension and ensure that that is kept snug on your face while you're wearing it. Now that those are in position, your T200 is ready to put on. In this quick video, we're going to show you how to set up and use your PX5 PAPR. First, you'll notice you've received the PX5 unit, the HEPA filter, a package of 10 of the pre-filters, a spark arrestor, only if you've ordered the Dash FR version, you'll have the battery charger, a battery, as well as a flow tester. So to start, we're going to get your PX5 unit. The first thing you'll need to do is likely remove the decals that are holding that front door in position. What you'll notice is that the front door physically doesn't attach to the PX5 without the filters in place. This is a safety precaution so that you don't unknowingly use the unit without a filter. With the front door off, you can now insert your main HEPA filter by locating the two locators at the top and then latching it shut at the bottom with the clip. With that now locked in position, you can now attach a pre-filter to the outermost part of the HEPA filter. This helps filter out larger particulates rather than having them embed into the HEPA filter which could shorten the life of the filter itself. With that now installed, you're ready to attach the spark arrestor to the front door if that's what you have in your package. So first you want to unlocate the two clips on the inside and remove that green door to enable you to attach the spark arrestor to the locators on the inside. With that spark arrestor now attached, you can then reattach the front door and then you can clip that door back onto the PX5 and you'll notice now that it will clip into position. You'll also want to just check around the outside to make sure there's no gaps. If there's any gaps then you need to just give it a good squeeze to make sure that it's clipped together 
properly. Your filters are now installed. Now for the battery. Before you use the PX5, you first want to make sure that you fully charge that battery for at least three hours. We don't ship batteries fully charged, so that way you're ensuring that it's got a full charge before you start to use it. So to insert that battery into the PX5, you first want to unlock the battery door on the bottom of the PX5 and open it. You'll notice that the door is completely sealed. That is protecting any moisture or contamination from coming in contact with that battery. With that door now open, you can insert that battery inside the PX5. And as you do that, you'll notice that the LEDs briefly illuminate, telling you what the charge is on that battery. Once that is installed, you can then shut that door and twist it locked, and that is now secure. Your PX5 is now ready to use, but before you use it, you may want to check it for flow. So to check the unit for flow, you want to first turn your PX5 on. This will enable air to start flowing through the unit. You want to also leave it turned on for at least five minutes to enable that to stabilize in the environment and altitude that it is currently in. Then you'll notice on the flow meter that there are several lines indicating different altitudes and temperatures. So you want to pay attention to what your altitude currently is and what your temperature is so that you can determine the right flow for your PX5. Once you've left that unit on for around five minutes, you can then insert that flow meter to the PX5. Then you want to hold that flow meter so that it is vertical. The PX5 will be on an angle at this point, but that way the flow meter is straight up and down so that you can get an accurate reading of the flow. Once you've determined you've got sufficient flow, you can then turn that PX5 off, remove that flow meter, and your PX5 is now set up and ready for use. In this quick video, we're going to show you how to attach the T200 to the breathing tube onto the PX5, and then show you how to don that respirator so that you can use it in your environment safely. First, you want to attach the breathing tube to the T200. You want to make sure that that is threaded up good and tight to ensure a good seal to the hood itself. With that now attached, you can now attach the bayonet end to the PX5. You want to ensure that that is done up good and tight to ensure a positive seal to the PAPR. With that now connected, you can then turn the PX5 on, making sure that there's no visual indicators showing a depleted battery or a clogged filter. With no indicators showing, we can now safely put the PAPR on with that functioning. So first we want to undo the belt and attach the PAPR around our waist. With the PAPR secure around our waist, we can then take the T200 and attach it onto our head, ensuring the ratchet is done up snug to ensure it's fitting comfortably on your head. You can then take your fingers and run it around the inside of that seal to make sure that the seal is sealing up good around the underside of your chin and up the side of your face. You can then take the cinch at the back of your head that's attached to the T1, T200 and ensure that it is being pulled tight 
and is secure. This will help with sealing up that respirator around your face and ensuring a positive pressure. What you'll notice with the T200 is that there likely will be some air that you'll feel blowing out. That is normal. This is a positive pressure respirator which ensures that air is always expelling out of the respirator rather than allowing contaminants in. You're now set up and ready to use your T200.